Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This is a topic that you probably covered when you looked at the cardiovascular system, talked about the different circulations, and of course there's two main ones. We have the systemic circulation, which is accomplished through the left side of the heart, and then the pulmonary circulation, which is done through the right side of the heart. Now, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the left side of the heart, that is the systemic circulation, just so we can get an understanding of why we need the pulmonary circulation, so we can understand how it works. All right, so here's our heart right here. Um, now the left side is of course over here, we're looking at the anterior view, this is the patient's left. Now we know that the left ventricle, which obviously is the larger part of the heart, larger side, pumps oxygenated blood to all the tissues of the body. So it's going to pump that blood through this semilunar valve, that is the aortic semilunar valve, into the aorta. And of course this blood is going to go everywhere. It has a lot of different places that it goes. It has the head and the brain, the arms, the trunk, the liver is very important for uh, the absorption of food, processing of food, digestive tract in general, the kidneys, the pelvis, legs. I mean, that blood goes all over the place. And why does that blood go to all over the place? Because all of those tissues need oxygen. Now, of course, they need other things like glucose, amino acids, lipids, ketone bodies, etc. However, oxygen is the main thing that we're focused on here. So let's suppose we're talking about the trunk muscles. We could say, let's say, rectus abdominis or transverse abdominis. Okay. Um, so that blood's going here and enters capillary beds associated with those muscle fibers. Those muscle fibers take up the oxygen. So whenever the blood leaves those through veins, the blood is relatively deoxygenated. Now it still, of course, has some oxygen, but it has a lot less oxygen than it did on the arterial side. And this is going to be the case for all of these systems. When blood comes in, it supplies oxygen, and then whenever the blood leaves through the veins, whatever veins we're talking about, that blood is deoxygenated. Now, if the blood just simply went back to another organ, it does no good no good because it had, doesn't have that oxygen anymore. You have to have a way to get oxygen back into the blood. Okay, So we look at all of these veins right here. The veins pretty much are all going to converge back on the right side of the heart as the right atrium. Now the other thing to associate with these veins, this deoxygenated blood, is that there's a bunch of waste products as well. Waste products like carbon dioxide, urea, acid, um, that diffused from those tissues or cells into the blood. And we don't really care here about the urea or the H+, we really just care about the carbon dioxide. So that means when we get this blood in the venous system back to the heart, that is the right side, we have to do two things. Okay. We have to send it to the lungs so we can first get more oxygen in the blood and then also get rid of CO2. And all that is going to occur in the pulmonary circulation at the level of the pulmonary capillaries. All right, so blood returning to the heart is, of course, deoxygenated, has much less oxygen, and it's full of waste like carbon dioxide. So when that blood comes back to the heart, it's going to come back specifically to the right atrium. Now, one thing I do want to mention uh, that's very important is that we have a few vessels, major vessels, that lead back to the right atrium. If we're talking about blood returning from the upper body, that is the arms and the head and the brain, that's going to return to the right atrium via the superior vena cava. Okay, so the superior vena cava comes from the top. All of the blood returning from the lower extremity, pretty much anything below uh, the heart, um, is going to return via the inferior vena cava to the right atrium. Okay? And there's one more that's a lot smaller, and that is the coronary sinus, which I don't believe is visible here. However, remember that there are coronary arteries that supply the heart muscle, the tissue itself of the heart. They, of course, take oxygen from the blood, that is the coronary arteries, and are drained by coronary veins. Pretty much all the coronary veins are going to converge at the coronary sinus, and not shown here, but the coronary sinus also empties into the right atrium. So the right atrium, when it gets blood returned to it, which is constant, of course, that it's just loaded with deoxygenated blood, okay? So now we're gonna focus in here just on this part, okay? So when you have that blood, deoxygenated that is, in the right atrium, it's gonna then move into the right ventricle, okay? 
and then from the right ventricle, it's going to pump that blood through the pulmonary sem semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk and then into the pulmonary arteries. Okay? So again, from the right ventricle, which is of course the side that's deoxygenated, blood moves to the pulmonary trunk, to the left and right pulmonary arteries, and then we're going to go to the pulmonary arterioles and then eventually into the pulmonary capillaries, which are what interact with the alveoli in the lungs. Okay? Remember, the alveoli are the site of gas exchange, and they are tightly associated with the pulmonary capillaries. Because if I want to do gas exchange, I have to move oxygen from the alveoli into the capillaries, and then I have to move carbon dioxide from these capillaries into the alveoli. So they're actually moving in opposite directions, and we're going to see that in a later video. Okay? So again, at the level of the pulmonary capillaries, that's where the gas exchange occurs. That's where we get the oxygen back in the blood, and we remove the carbon dioxide. Okay? Now, what I want you to notice here is that if we look at the pulmonary trunk, which is really just a major artery, all the arteries leading to the lungs, notice that it's deoxygenated. One common misconception about arteries is that they carry oxygenated blood. Not all of them. Most arteries carry oxygenated blood. But notice that this pulmonary artery system is actually carrying deoxygenated blood. So it's backwards. And we only see a couple other examples of that in human physiology, one of which is actually in the fetus. Okay? So a better definition of an artery is really it just carries blood away from the heart. And certainly the pulmonary trunk and arteries here are carrying blood away from the heart. Okay? So again, we're going to have that those capillaries in the lungs pick up oxygen and get rid of CO2. And now when we drain those with the pulmonary venules and left and right pulmonary veins, which we see right here, we now see that blood is oxygenated. Okay? It's now returning to the heart, so that makes it a vein, or veins plural, but it now has more oxygen in it, and it has gotten rid of a lot of the carbon dioxide and waste. So those pulmonary veins carry that oxygenated blood back to the left side of the heart, and enter via the left atrium. And of course, we know the, the situation here. The left atrium then moves that blood into the left ventricle, and then our cycle is going to repeat as before. Okay? So what is the key with pulmonary circulation? What is it for? Pulmonary circulation is for sending blood from the heart to the lungs to pick up oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Okay? Also note that the only way we can actually accomplish that at the lungs is if we're actively inhaling and exhaling. Okay? So we have this deoxygenated blood in the right side of the heart, has to be sent to the lungs to get rid of waste, pick up oxygen, and then it returns to the left side of the heart, where the left side then moves that blood to all the systemic circulation, all the tissues, and so on and so forth. Okay? So those are our two main circulations, systemic but then we also have the pulmonary circulation. Now, as you get later into the respiratory system, you may hear this term called bronchial circulation. And I want to distinguish bronchial circulation from pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation is the circulation that we just saw here, which is for gas exchange with the lungs. Okay? It's for oxygenating the blood and getting rid of waste. Bronchial circulation is just part of systemic circulation. Okay? So bronchial circulation is part of systemic, and it really just supplies the tissue itself of the lungs. The lungs are a metabolically active tissue. They have to have oxygen, too, to survive. So the bronchial circulation simply serves the tissue of the lungs itself. It's kind of like the coronary circulation for the heart. Remember, the coronary circulation serves the heart muscle itself. It doesn't move blood through these chambers, right? It doesn't move it to the rest of the body. The coronary circulation simply serves the heart muscle itself. The bronchial circulation serves the lung tissue itself. And so make sure on an exam you distinguish between the pulmonary circulation, which is this, and the bronchial circulation, which actually serves the tissue of the lungs themselves. Okay? But in any case, hopefully this video made sense. And one thing I would focus on learning is actually the order of structures that the blood is actually flowing through. That can be actually a very good ordering question um, or a trace type of question. So make sure you understand this right here. And also understand what the purpose of this is, of course. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. 
Thank you very much.